The Civil War was fought in 10,000 places, at Big Bend, Big Sandy, and the Big Sunflower River. From Bunker Hill, West Virginia, and Blue Springs, Tennessee, and Cairo, Illinois, to Golgotha Church, Georgia, and Christianburg, Kentucky. At Citrus Point on the Cimarron River, and along Cowskin Bottom. At Pebbly Run and La Glorieta Pass, and Gettysburg. I think if I had my choice of all the moments to be present at, at the, in that war period, it would be at Gettysburg during Lincoln's delivery of his speech. Maybe to have seen him craft those beautiful words, his marvelous healing words, and then deliver them. Uh, they were for everyone for all time. They subsumed the entire war and all in it. It showed his compassion for everyone his love for his people. That's where I'd like to be. On November 19th, Lincoln traveled to Gettysburg to dedicate the new Union Cemetery. The featured speaker was Edward Everett of Massachusetts, a diplomat, clergyman, and celebrated orator. The president had been invited almost as an afterthought to offer a few appropriate remarks. Everett spoke for not quite two hours. Then Lincoln rose. A local photographer took his time focusing. Presumably, the president could be counted on to go on for a while. But he spoke just 269 words. He started off by reminding his audience that just 87 years had passed since the founding of the nation. And then he went on to embolden the Union cause with some of the most stirring words ever spoken. Lincoln was heading back to his seat before the photographer could open the shutter. He felt that he had failed, that it was a poor speech, that the people didn't like it. It was so brief, less than two minutes. He felt that he had failed. Lehman, his friend Ward Lehman, was sitting next to him on the stand. When he sat down, there was just a sprinkling of applause. And he said, Lehman, that speech won't scowl. That's what you say about a plow in the prairies when the mud doesn't come off it. The cheek of every American must tingle with shame as he reads the silly, flat, dishwatery utterances of the man who has to be pointed out to intelligent foreigners as the President of the United States. Chicago Times. Dear Mr. President, I should be glad if I could flatter myself that I came as near to the central idea of the occasion in two hours as you did in two minutes. Edward Everett. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met here on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of it as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that their nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they have thus far so nobly carried on, 
it is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. <laughs>